Hey guys, so in this section, I want to take you guys through creating a release schedule and also go over some YouTube strategy. So um, I want to ask you guys a question. How often should you release your music? Some people say you should release your music once a month. Some people say once a week. Some people say once a day. Remember how early I was talking about Russ and Gary V, how they both had different content release strategies? Russ released one quality song every single week. Meanwhile, Gary V made one long form content, maybe in one hour content, and then chopped it up into micro content and then released once a day. So whose strategy actually works best? Should you release music once a week or should you release as frequently as possible, maybe once a day? Or should you release once a month? Well, here is my opinion. The person with the most content wins. And basically what this means is uh, the person who releases the most music and just gets their music out there usually wins. And I'll go on to explain why I say this. But if you look back at theme pages, theme pages are releasing content multiple times a day. There's some people that release five pieces of content a day. There's some people that release once a day. Rarely do you find influencers or theme pages or meme pages posting once a week. Uh, for example, this page posted two hours ago and then he posted five hours ago and it is only midday right now. So I'm sure he's going to post at least another time today. So why is he doing this? So my opinion is you should release your music at least once a week or at least once every two weeks. And here's why. The more music you release, the more data you have. If you don't release a lot of music, you're not going to be able to tell what's working and what's not working. And because I released a lot of music, I'm able to see what my audience resonate with the most. I'm also able to see what country there in this is good for targeting purposes i'm able to see what the average age range is i'm able to see what other artists my fans like so i can use those artists when it comes to targeting as well i'm just giving so much more data by releasing music more frequently if i didn't release music as frequently as i did i wouldn't be able to see what's working who is resonating with my music and optimize my music to get the best result. I just have so much data that I can look at to optimize myself as an artist and to help myself grow faster. Because every time you look at data, you're gonna be able to improve the next time you make a new song. Cause you'll be able to go like, oh, my fans like this. So let me make more of this. So the real strategy is to get the data. Once you have the data, you'll be able to optimize and grow so much faster. And that's how the big artists are growing so fast. They have companies, agencies, uh, um, labels looking at all this data and recommending to the artist what kind or type of song to produce next. So here's another reason you want to release more frequent because Spotify also allows you to pitch your song to their editorial playlist. So the way you do this, you have to go to Spotify for artists and then in Spotify for artists, if you have an upcoming release, you will see something that says pitch a song to our editors. If you do not see it on the homepage of Spotify for artists, you can also go under music and then under music, you'll see up and coming and then up and coming, you will be able to uh, pitch the song. If you don't have a song or if you just just released a song, it may take a few days for Spotify to actually pick it up. But you can only pitch one song to the editorial playlist for Spotify for artists every 10 days. So for the best results, you should release your music at least once every 10 days. You can even do once a week, but you won't be able to pitch your song to Spotify until the previous release has been released. Plus, the more songs you release on Spotify, the better for the algorithm. Spotify now has a bunch more data and is able to categorize you with a bunch of other artists and suggest you to more fans. So once you do pitch, you're going to have a screen where it says uh, choose the music culture and then choose the mood and then choose the song style. After that, 
you're gonna have to submit some information about the song so the playlist curator can get more detail about it and this is where you're able to put in the city and a description of the song and then when you're done you're gonna get a pop-up that says thank you for your pitch and if your song gets picked up by the playlist they will notify you you can pitch another unreleased song after this one goes live on spotify so after this release goes live then you're able to pitch your new song to spotify so a good time period between songs is at least once every 10 days and this gives the algorithm and playlist curators enough time to actually review your song and then put it in the accurate playlist so it's very hard to keep a release schedule if you don't put it on a calendar so the best way to stick to a release schedule or a release calendar is to mark off the days on an actual calendar of when you would like to release a song so if you're a producer you can create a song get it completely finished and you have two weeks in between each song to actually get it done and then submit it to the spotify playlist if you're a singer songwriter this gives you enough time to go to the studio and put out more music and again this is completely up to you um, the more frequent you release music the better but it's up to you but i do want to point out that your music should be quality music and you can always delete your music if it doesn't work out if you put up a song and it's not getting the best engagement you can always delete it off of all the platforms you take the data from that and then optimize and make your next song better based off that data all right guys so the last thing in this lesson i want to cover is youtube the youtube strategy youtube is one of those platforms where you will continuously get organic growth so if you're an artist and you're not on youtube you should highly reconsider that and um, look into getting a youtube channel um, because youtube is the only platform where you will continuously grow over time every other platform over time you will not grow organically youtube you will grow end of your title or in the beginning of your title you can add a key term so if you're a rapper you can do best rap song 2021 and then put the name of your music at the end of it this again will get you tons and tons more streams for example for my kind of music if i want to make music and and get a lot more reach uh i can use borrowed authority and i could put um, the name of someone huge in my industry and then the name of my song afterwards so their name the track name and then my name or their name my name and then the track name and that's really the secret for 
um, using YouTube to get more visibility. The other strategy is you can see what kind of tags the music video is using. So if you were to go to 69's page, I'm using a tool called TubeBuddy. Um, I'll drop a link on this video, but TubeBuddy just gives you a bunch of data on that music video and on that channel. So uh, one of the benefits of TubeBuddy is you can see what tags they're using in their video. So um, all his tags, he's in Zaza, he's 69 song. Now, if I wanted my song to compete with 69, then I would just copy all his tags or I would copy all his best tags. So all the tags where he's ranked, which <laughs> he's ranked in all of his songs. But for example, let's go to now say we were to go to J. Cole. Just do the same thing. Go to one of his music videos and see what tags he's using because uh, the tags is because the tags is what's making his video rank. Now, if I use the same tags as J. Cole, then YouTube's going to start suggesting my video next to J. Cole's. So if I'm using the exact same tags that he's using, I'm going to be suggested in this area. So majority of the time, YouTube uses the tags to categorize or determine where to categorize a particular video. So you can see all the, the, the tags he's using, Cole, middle, child, show rankings, under, license, ROC, like all, the, all these. And this is really how uh, people grow their YouTube channel. They, they find videos and they see what tags the video is using. And a lot of people don't really know about this strategy. So because you know about the strategy now, you're going to be able to rank your music on YouTube a lot higher than everyone else. So again, just go to a video, find out what tags you're using and put those tags in your video as well. So for YouTube growth, you really want to focus on tags and also keywords. Now, a really cool tool you can use for discovering the best keyword to use is Keyword Planner. And you can access this just by going to Google Keyword Planner. And then you can just click on ads.google.com. So you need to create a Google Ads account to use Keyword Planner. Once you are in on the top in the tool section, you'll see uh, Keyword Planner. And basically what Keyword Planner is, is suggests you the most popular keyword or key term for that keyword. So say I put in country music, get results. Now you can see the average search volume for each of these key terms on Google. And Google and YouTube are both search engines. Google owns YouTube. So, so the average monthly search on Google is most likely gonna reflect the same average search term on YouTube. So what you can do is if you're a new artist, you, you don't wanna compete with high search volume terms. So I would not use any of these, like country song. I mean, that gets 10,000 to 100,000 searches every month. So that's kind of too high. And what you can do is just go to the next page until you find something more in the range of uh, 1,000 to 10,000. So if I was to type in techno search, you can see that Amelie Lenz, she has 1,000 to 10,000 search term tech house. So this would be something that would be good for me to put in the title of my YouTube video. I could say tech house, my name, and then the name of my song. What you want to do is you want to capture all these keywords, um, searches on YouTube. So look, dark techno, this would be something that I would put into the title of one of my tracks on YouTube. I would say dark techno unseen and then the name of my song. And again, you're just capitalizing on the search volume for this keyword. And since the competition is low and the average uh, monthly search is low, um, I'll be able to get a lot of those views. So when it comes to YouTube, you really want to try to dominate a key term. So definitely use this tool to your advantage. Again, you want to find a key term with low search volume and low competition 
and then put it in the title of your track on YouTube. This way, anytime someone searches YouTube, your song will pop up because it has that search term in the title. And again, don't forget that the thumbnail for your video is very important. So have a thumbnail that pops and all you have to do is just find other thumbnails in that search term on um, YouTube and then replicate it, find, create something similar to that thumbnail. And again, this is what all YouTube creators do. They model each other's thumbnails and they also model each other's um, titles. So don't think you're doing anything wrong by doing this. This is what everyone does to get traffic from everyone else and then also end up in the suggested search area for when someone is watching a video because that's how YouTube suggests the next video. They go by tags, title, and um, click the rate. In this module, I wanna go over distribution. I believe distribution is the most important part of an artist's career. It is what they should be focusing most of their time, energy, and effort building. If you do not have a distribution list or create a distribution system, then uh, you're not going to grow and have as much opportunities as you should have. Distribution is vital to your success. So in this lesson, I'm going to go over distribution, why it's important, and how to actually build a distribution list. So why is distribution important? If you look back to a record label, the reason record labels exist or a record labels a thing is because of their distribution. The more distribution a record label has, the more powerful it is to get signed to that label. There's many different types and forms of distribution. There's followers, there's email lists, there's retargeting pixels, there's radio station, there's, a, there's PR connections, there's blog writers, there's playlists, social media channels, collaborations, and mailing lists. So by going to a record label, the record label should be able to put you in front of their audience using one of these methods or majority of these methods. That's the point of going to a record label. Now, because you are doing this independently, it is your responsibility to build your own distribution. And that means that now it's your responsibility to grow your following, to grow your email list, to create a pixel, to do retargeting campaigns, build an audience using retargeting, to get in contact with radio stations and to build relationships with them, to use your personal network, this is friends and families, to, to use PR and start building connections with writers and bloggers and start building connections with uh, playlist owners. And it's also your responsibility to get on every single social media platform and increase your following there as well. So as an independent artist, you have to now take on the responsibility of building all of these distribution channels. So distribution is your most important asset. So my question to you is how big is your distribution? Your value as an artist comes from the size of your reach rather than your talent. You will get a hundred times more opportunities for shows and chances to collaborate with other artists if your distribution is large. A good example of this is actors and models. Actors, no matter how talented they are, they are always asked how big is their following. I've worked with so many actors and every single one of them say the question they get often is uh, what is their Instagram because the person casting the actor looks at the actor's social media following to see how much reach they can get from this actor. If you have two actors and one is not as good as the other, but the one that's not as good as the other one has more followings, they're gonna choose the one with more of a social media following. Same as an influencer or models. Models will not get casted for a role unless they have a large social media following. And that's the same when it comes to artists. Artists are taking more seriously when they have a larger social media following. And social media following is just one form of distribution. As I showed you, there's so many different forms of distribution, but the larger all 
your distribution channels, the more opportunity you're gonna have as an artist. More people will wanna collaborate with you. It's gonna be easier for you to collaborate with other artists. So out of everything on the list, the areas that we're gonna focus on for this course is email lists, tracking codes, and relationships. Basically, your email list is a collection of emails that you receive through your blogs or website. The tracking code is a line of code that basically allows you to track people around the internet. So for example, if someone lands on your website or watches one of your videos online, you can now retarget that person and follow them across the internet for at least 180 to 365 days out of the year. Last is your relationship. How are you gonna build your network? So we're gonna focus on these three areas throughout the course. The reason that email list is so important is because Literally, companies sell for millions and millions of dollars purely for the fact that they have a massive email list because access to people is so valuable. So if you start building your email list, you'll have so much leverage and you have so much more opportunities to get gigs and to play out because now you have a database of people you can reach out to as many times as you want. So the average open rate is 15 to 25%. So that means if you have an email list of 100 emails, that means 15 to 25 people will open your emails. Which means if you send your music via email to 100 people, 15 to 25 of those people will open your email. Now, say if you had 100,000 people on your email list or 10,000 people on your email list, 15 to 25% is going to open it, which means that the larger your email list, the easier it is for you to get your music in front of people. So the way we're gonna build our email list is through MailChimp, SoundCloud, and Download Gates. And we're gonna go over that in the next video. Now, when it comes to Facebook tracking codes, I'm gonna show you guys how to install it on your websites or how to set up retargeting campaigns so you can start following people across the internet. And this is how you build something called the celebrity effect. So people need to see you at least eight to 15 times in order to remember you. So we're gonna create something called the celebrity effect where once someone sees you once or watches one of your videos, you're gonna follow them around the internet so they see you more often. Then this is when you start to get brand recognition and people will start to associate you as a celebrity because they're seeing you everywhere. We're gonna get these codes and we're gonna install it and we're also gonna set up some retargeting campaigns. And last is relationship. So I'm gonna show you guys how to use social media to build more relationships with other artists so you can start collaborating and start building a network. So we're gonna go through all of this in the distribution part of the course and it's gonna be very, very critical for you to understand and start using the tips and tools that I'm gonna show you because distribution is so important for your growth as an artist. So last thing I wanna do is I wanna talk about websites. A lot of artists out there have websites, but they don't effectively know how to use it. Having a website just to have a website to put all your music and all that, it's pointless. Because once someone does go to your website, that's it, they're gone and you have no way of actually keeping in touch with that person. So I'm gonna show you all the do's and don'ts. So if you have a website, you're gonna be able to use it at the most effective level. I'm not saying you need a website to do retargeting, you don't. I'm gonna show you how to do retargeting without a website, but for the people who have a website, I'm gonna show you how to use it effectively because majority of the time, all the artists who do have a website, they aren't using it to the best of their ability. So they're unable to track people and build that celebrity effect. So that's what we're gonna cover in the lessons coming forward. We're gonna go over all of this and get you guys set up and ready to start building distribution lists and distribution channels. So let's go, I'll see you guys over in the next video. So we've now reached one of the most important parts of music marketing. Distribution is literally what will make or break you as an artist. If you want to become a really big and successful artist and have a massive fan base, distribution should be one of your main focus. How can you build a bigger distribution list? Again, the reason a lot of artists are one hit wonders is because they don't have a distribution list built. Now there's many ways of distribution, like right? there's many forms of distribution, but 
it still comes down to how big is your distribution. Again, because you're an independent artist, it's now your responsibility to take ownership and build your distribution list as big as possible. So as I mentioned earlier, there's different forms of distribution that you will want to focus on as an independent artist. So when it comes to building your own list, there's a couple different methods and I'm going to take you through majority of these, but there's a couple different forms of distribution. First, it's your followers. You have social media. So on social media, you have TikTok, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, you have YouTube. You also have your SoundCloud followers. You have your Spotify followers. Your social media and your followers across different platforms is a huge part of your distribution list. So using a lot of the methods that I showed you guys earlier in the content creation section, you'll be able to start building your follower count using a lot of those methods. Also your email list. How many of you guys right now are collecting emails from your fans or your listeners? Majority of the time, artists aren't collecting the emails of their fans. And this is a huge loss for artists because there's no way for them to continuously reach out to their fan base besides their social media profile. By having a huge email list, you can reach out to these people as many times as you want. And the bigger your list, the bigger your reach and the more offers you can put in front of these people. So every time you have a new release, you can send an email to your database and get a bunch of streams, get a bunch of purchases. And we're going to cover this in uh, this section because this is very, very important. And then you also have retargeting pixels, which I'm going to show you guys how to build a retargeting list. So you have these people you can always show your ads to at a super cheap and affordable rate. And then you have your personal network. You have your friend and families. Not a lot of people are collecting emails from their friends and family. So they're not going to be able to put their product or put their music or put their content in front of them, whatever they want as well. So there's a lot of bloggers out there and bloggers have big databases. So you can start your own blog writing about your music and writing about yourself as an artist, writing about your journey, and then you build a readership there. And these readership is part of your distribution list. Then you have playlists so you can start and build your own playlist. And the bigger your playlist grows, again, the more people will hear your music. And I'm going to show you this as well. And then you have theme pages. Theme pages is something I highly recommend you guys start if you really, really want to uh, grow your followership. Because by having a theme page, let's say a theme page focused around a specific genre, so say you're a hip hop artist, you create a theme page about hip hop. Now there's tons and tons of theme pages out there. Now I have relationships with a bunch of theme page owners who are also artists. And every time they put out a new music, they post their music on their theme page, which drives tons of traffic to their music. So creating and building your own theme page, along with building a playlist on Spotify are two really good tips that can help you get a lot more plays and the last on the list is phone list so not a lot of people do this and i'm sure you guys seen a lot of influencers out there doing this collecting their followers phone numbers and this is because they're doing text marketing so there's email marketing where you can email people all the time and then there's text marketing now you can do a text blast to everyone who opted into becoming part of your phone database so whenever you have a new music that comes out you can text everyone and go like hey my new music, uh, check it out or download it or purchase it. So those are just a few forms of distribution that we're going to be focusing on in this lesson. So I want to touch on retargeting a little bit more because as a music marketer, retargeting is one of the most powerful things you can do because you're running ads and when you're running ads, you're reaching a lot more people than you would normally organically. So when you do do retargeting, People react 30% better when they see a retargeting ad. So if they see your music again, the second and third time, you have a 60% higher conversion rate. And when people see you over and over again, they pay more attention. So three out of five people online 
notice your retargeting ads. So if it's a cold ad, um, they're not gonna really pay attention the first time they see it, but if they see it over and over again, they're gonna pay attention. So here's a quick little graph about retargeting. So as you see, the more times someone sees your ad, the higher the conversion rate. So you may be asking someone to stream or listen to your music uh, the first time and they may not take action. But when they see it a third, fourth, fifth, and even a sixth time, the chances of them listening to your music, becoming a fan, and uh, giving you their email or downloading your music increases a lot. You have a much higher conversion rate. So one of the big things we're gonna be focused on when it comes to music marketing is building a large distribution list by building a retargeting list. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do all of that and let's jump into it like right now. So the first thing you need to do is you need to have an email service provider and there's many different forms or many different types of email service providers but the one that we're going to use or the one that I'm going to show you guys how to use is MailChimp. That's because MailChimp is a free service and it allows you to collect up to 2,000 emails for free. So first thing you need to do is you need to actually create a MailChimp account. So you just go to create a MailChimp account. So once you create a MailChimp account, you have to verify the email address. So I'm going to go verify the email address right now. All right. And then you pick, I'm not a robot in MailChimp. You just continue using the free plan. You put in your name, uh, business name, website, So once you create a MailChimp account, you go to audiences and then from audiences, you can go to view all audiences and then you can rename your audience by clicking on the audience settings, audience name and default. Then you can rename the audience to whatever you want. So literally name it, whatever you want, or you could just leave it as that audience. So this basically means that all the all the emails that you collect will get sent here so you can start doing email marketing to your database so every time you have a new song you can send out that email to your entire database so now that you have a mailchimp set up we could go over to hype it and tone den and set up a download gate and basically a download gate what happens is uh, every time someone downloads your music they have to give you their email address so you can see here that I've collected a bunch of emails from all the people who have downloaded my music. And as you can see, within the last seven days, I've had 54 people visit my gates. So this is going to be the main way we're going to be building our distribution list. Um, we're going to be creating download gates. And every time someone wants to download your music, they have to give you their email. So the way to create a download gate is you go to share. You go to select download gate. You put in the link. So let's go SoundCloud. You can put in the link of uh, put in the link of whatever song you want. You put in the link. Click next. You choose the genre, and then you have to upload the file. Once you upload the file, you put the artist name. You put the title, and then you can design how the download gate looks. So you can change the color of the themes. And then from there, you can create steps to the download gate. What I recommend is uh, using no more than two steps. Uh, the first step should always be to collect your collect their email. Then the second step, I have them following my account, commenting on the track and liking and reposting my SoundCloud track. So I have them doing all of this in order to unlock my downloads. So I'm building followers and gaining social proof on all my music every time someone goes to download it, which is why if you look at all my music, you can see tons of comments. That's because all these people have went through my download gate and as a result, I've captured their emails and I've received comments, reposts and likes on every one of my track. In the download gate, you also have the option of having them unlock your gate. So obviously the more steps you have, the lower the conversion rate is going to be. So this is why I recommend only having two. So if you want to gain more Spotify followers, you can click follow my profile. You could click save my tracks. If you wanted to do a pre-save, you could do pre-save. 
So the next step would be release settings. So do you want to make it public or do you want to schedule it? And obviously always put feature this title on Hyped It. This is one cool thing about Hyped It. They automatically do email promotions for you. So every time someone downloads your song, you can recommend them another one of your track and you get sent to that person, that fan immediately. And this is also where you can add your Facebook pixel. Remember how we went over in the last video, how you can add your Facebook pixel on Hyped It? You can do that, but in order to do that, you have to set up your custom conversions and have a custom domains in order for, for Facebook to give you permission to track it. Otherwise, if you just do this without setting up the custom domain, then Facebook is going to pause your ad. And then all you do is confirm it. Once it's confirmed, then you'll be able to create download gates. And basically a download gate is every time someone lands on this, they can click download and then you collect the name email. Then the next step is they will either follow you or repost your track or comment on uh, SoundCloud or whatever platform you want to send them to. So if you want more Spotify plays, you will choose Spotify. And the same is true for Tonden. You can uh, come to Tonden and create an account. Once again, Tonden is free, so you can create download gates and smart links in Tonden. Um, meanwhile, on Hyped It, you only can create download gates for free. Otherwise, you'd have to upgrade in order to do smart links and more download gates. So in uh, Tonden, you have to go to campaign, you go to smart links, and then you can, on the top right, create a new smart link or create a new link. Then you have the option to choose what you want them to do. So what are you promoting? You're promoting music. It's going to be an existing release, or if you want to do pre-saves, you do upcoming release. And then you just follow the steps on the side. So you enter the track URL. So it could be the SoundCloud link. And you can also add multiple services. So you can add Apple Music, add Amazon, you can add Beatport, you can add basically all links to this. And then you just keep going down and you can build your landing page. You can design it on Canva or you could change the background image. You put the title, the description. Um, this is where you would create the download. So the download is called Social Unlock. You go to Create New Social Unlock. That brings you to this screen where you can uh, create a download unlock. So get people to unlock a downloadable file. So continue and then you follow this on the left side. So you go through this, you paste URL there. You can also put the title and then you put the download button. You can customize the name of it. You could put get here, you could pick download now, but you can also leave it as download. So the audio is going to be, it's going to come from that link that we posted up there already. So you set up the unlock on the left side. So in order for someone to unlock it, they have to do a single step. You can also do multiple steps to unlock, but you have to upgrade to unlock that feature. For now, single step is perfectly fine. You can do connect with Facebook. This way they have to sign into Facebook and you automatically get their Facebook email or what I recommend doing is they have to follow you on SoundCloud to download or follow you on Spotify to download. So those are the two best options that I would uh, I would select. And then this is where you upload your file. You click upload and then you just upload your file. From there, you can customize your landing page. So you can put light background, you put a dark background. And this is where you put your Facebook pixel and that's it you go to finish and now your download gate is ready to go so then you review and then you go to the next step so then you could go back to your smart links and then click the drop down and select what you just created with tone then what you can also do is if you upgrade you can set up an automatic email capture form so instead of having them unlock the download to get your music, you can automatically just have an email capture form. And then you just keep going through this. So now when you get to modify link URL, you can go to add domain 
And this again is what you have to do uh, to set up your custom domain. And then to find your custom domain, you click domains and you scroll all the way down and you can see your custom domain. I accidentally deleted mine, but um, I definitely have a custom domain set up and you can see TD that unseen. See, my custom domain works for Tonden, but I accidentally deleted it from Tonden when I was creating this video. Um, so I have to redo it and verify it again. And then from there, you can put in your tracking information. Uh, again, you put in your pixel, your Facebook pixel ID. You, if you have Google Analytics or Snapchat, you can put in your, all your pixel here. And then you go to finish. And then you can create your link so once you share this on your social media or once you share this or run ads to it, you'll be able to start capturing people's information, capturing their email in exchange for them to download your track. All right, awesome. So now that you have your smart link set up, basically what you do is you go to the smart link and then you copy the URL. Once you copy the URL, you go over to SoundCloud and in SoundCloud, Basically what you can do is you can edit the track and put the link inside of your buy link section. So in the buy link section, this is where you're gonna put the link and then in the title, you put free download. And basically what that does is it puts, the, it puts a button at the bottom of your track so anytime someone is listening to your music if they want to download it they just click free download and then it takes them to your download gate and in the download gate they can click download and leave their name and email and also go through the rest of the steps so they can get your download so this is what i do for every one of my songs which is why a lot of my songs have a bunch of streams and a bunch of comments. You can also put any link you want here. So if you want someone to purchase your song, you put the purchase link there and then turn this to buy now. If you want someone to stream your song on Spotify, you put the Spotify link here and then change this to listen on Spotify. But for the purpose of building a distribution list, I always recommend putting a download gate here and then put in here to free download. This way you can start collecting emails. The more emails you have, the better it's gonna be for you in the future because you'll be able to send emails to these people anytime you want. So in the beginning, we're trying to collect as much emails as we can. And then through emails, that's when we sell our work or at least that's one strategy. There's many different strategies. So you can actually see on, on this song, I actually have a smart link and they can stream my song on any platform. They can purchase the song. You can do whatever you want with that link, which is why SoundCloud is so powerful. You can literally send traffic from SoundCloud to wherever you want them to go. You can even put your Instagram handle there. So if you want them to follow you on Instagram, in the description section, all you have to do is put follow me on Instagram. So this is really a very important section to utilize. I've gotten so many new followers on my Instagram page just because of this one method right here by putting follow me on Instagram. Now, if you want more purchases, you put purchase my song on Beatport. Or if you want more downloads, you could put your link there, download my song here. So really utilize this section because it's really, really powerful. So I'm gonna show you guys later on how to drive a ton of traffic to your download gates on SoundCloud and also on other platforms. So we're gonna drive a ton of traffic to your SoundCloud link by using playlists and also by using advertising. And I'm gonna show you guys those in the advertising section and also the PR section. All right, so when it comes to distribution, social media is another powerful form of distribution. And I'm gonna show you guys how to grow your social media accounts. And I've, I've actually already touched on a lot of it in the content creation section, but the fastest and easiest way I found to grow a Facebook page is to use videos. So we use videos and we run ads to it and you get two types of growth here. 
what's awesome is when you run ads to videos you can invite every single person that likes your video so this automatically builds your reach on facebook so every single person that liked my video i'm now inviting to follow me on facebook and believe it or not majority of the people follow you on facebook because they've seen your video they watch your video so they already are familiar with you as you can see in this ad that i ran i have over 400 people who interacted with my posts I've had 53 people who shared my post, so now their friends are also seeing this post. I make sure that every time someone shares my post, I comment. This lets them see my name once again, so when they do see that I have invited them to like my Facebook page, that the chance of them following me back is going to increase using that video method that I showed you, I've gained 7,000 followers on my Facebook page. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do this. And um, what you see here is this is linking to my Spotify, which I have created a playlist with my song as the first song. So this helps me in two ways. It helps me get a lot more plays and it makes me a playlist owner. So now I'm gonna be collecting a bunch of organic traffic for people listening and looking for this type of music. So there's tons of people on Spotify looking for playlists. So by creating your own playlist and putting your music as the first few songs, you're gonna get a lot of growth, which is another reason why my songs have been getting picked up by the Spotify algorithm a lot because I'm driving traffic to the playlist and the first song is mine, as well as doing a lot of the methods that I'm gonna be showing you guys in the advertising and PR section. So definitely go and create a Spotify playlist and how you do it, you just click new playlist on the bottom left and then you just type in the name of the playlist, you give it a title, you put an image and then you create once you create it, you have the option to make it public or private. This is a public playlist. So when we get into the advertising stage, I'm gonna show you guys the fastest way to do all of this, fastest way to grow all your accounts. But for now, I just wanna show you that this is a form of distribution. Um, I'm building my distribution through running ads and then inviting everyone to like my Facebook page. The other cool thing about using videos is that you can retarget every single person who watches this video. So if someone watches 50% of the video, 25% of the video, or 95% of the video, or even three seconds of the video, I can retarget them. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. Here, you can see that I'm retargeting every single person who watched at least three seconds of my video in the past 365 days. So that's 73,000 people that I could put my ads in front of over and over and over again. I'm also retargeting people who engage with my Facebook page. So all those people who liked my, my post or liked my video, shared my video, who followed me on my Facebook page after I invited them to, I'm able to retarget them. So 8,900 people, everyone who interacted with me on Instagram, I'm retargeting them, 6,400 people, everyone who watch at least 15 seconds of my video on Facebook. So everyone who watches at least 15 seconds of my 30 seconds video, I can retarget them. So this is another reason why it's very important for you to build a distribution list or, or create a pixel so you can start pixeling these people and so you can start creating custom audiences so you can retarget these people over and over again and we're going to go into a lot more details in advertising on how to do this but for this section i just want to show you guys that now that you have your pixel you can start building your followers aka distribution by running ads to a video so the way that you create a custom audience so you can start tracking everyone who lands on your page or watches your video is you have to click create audience 
and then you have the option to create a custom audience or create a lookalike audience. Again, we're going to go into this a little bit more in the advertising section, but for now you just create custom audience and you have the option to target everyone who interacts with your Instagram page, everyone who interacts with your Facebook page, everyone who's ever attending one of your events, anyone who uh, watches a percentage of your video, you could target your email list. So depending on how big your email list is, you can upload your email list to Facebook and retarget all those people, put your ads in front of your email list. So not only are you going to be following up through email, you're also going to be putting your ads in front of them on Facebook. So they're not going to be able to escape you. This is how you become a celebrity in your space. You become recognized. So you can click videos, click next, then you can choose what you want to track people who watch 50% of your videos. And then from there, you choose what video. And as you see, you can do all of this. You could go through all the videos you've ever posted on your Facebook page. You just click them. And now every single person who've watched all these videos, you can retarget. So all of these people, and the list goes on and on and on. There's, there's tons and tons of pages of videos that I've uploaded. So I could retarget all of them. And you can also retarget people based on a certain amount of days. So the max number you can do is 365 days. But say you wanted to retarget people who watched your video within 30 days. So now you just change the date. And now you're gonna be a lot more fresh on these people's mind than uh, if you did 365 days. You can even do seven days. Now these people saw you less than a week ago. The lower the days, the more recent that person has seen your video. So there's so many different strategies and I'll go into this in the advertising section again, but just want to show you that you can do this. You can retarget people based off the amount or the percentage of a video that they watched of yours. So the other places you can go to build your distribution list is also your Instagram page or TikTok, literally anywhere where you can post a link, you can use that platform to build an email list. For example, I have a link tree here. If you click on the link tree, it sends them to my smart link where they can go to all my other accounts. But if you were promoting a song, basically what you do is you put that link there and in the caption of any of your songs, you just say, check out the link in bio and when they go to the link in your bio they'll be taken to the download gate or to whatever site you send them to but for me um my main objective is to get them into my spotify playlist so i have this as the first one in the top one my second priority is to get them to purchase my music this way i can make money from that so all my content and all my posts always has a call to action that says click the link in bio. And you can also see here that my text says download remember here. So if they click that, my top link, when I was promoting this, my top link would have been download remember here, which would have been a download gate where I can collect their emails. So there's so many different ways to utilize social media to start building a distribution list on other platforms. You can really just connect all of the platforms together. You send them from SoundCloud to your Instagram, from Instagram to your SoundCloud, to your Facebook, to your smart links, to your download gates. You can really connect everything together. And that's how you should be thinking as an independent artist. You should have a goal in mind and whatever your goal is, that is exactly where you need to drive all your traffic. If you want more followers on Spotify, or more streams on Spotify, drive all your traffic there. If you want more downloads or distribution or building a email list or text message list, then you drive them there. So the other thing I'm gonna show you guys is not only are we gonna drive traffic to our SoundCloud, but every time someone likes and comments or reposts your track on SoundCloud, this is another opportunity for you to get a lot more plays and downloads and purchase because every time someone takes an action on your song on SoundCloud, you can now reach out to them and message them directly. For example, say I go to my track, I could go to more stats. Now in more stats, I can see every single person who listens to my music in the past seven days. 
I can also see every single person who listened to my music in the past 12 months. Like this is crazy. You can also see every single person who's reposted your track. So all these people who reposted my music in the past, I can just reach out to them and message them directly and say, hey, I saw you reposted my last song. Uh, can you please repost this song as well? Or hey, I saw that you liked my, my track. Or hey, I saw that you commented on my track. Here's a link to purchase it if you'd like to purchase it. So SoundCloud is so sick because it allows you to interact with your immediate fans. And the more you interact with people, the more they're gonna uh, want to stay in touch with you. You can look at every single person who reposted your track, every single person who commented on your track, every single person who's liked your track. So you can literally reach out to all of these people. Um, most of these people will have their social media linked so you can even message them on social media. You can build relationships with people. I do want to say do not be spammy. No one likes someone who is spammy. So go in trying to build a genuine relationship with these people. So this is a used way to build a fan base and get more downloads and get more purchases because you have all these people who are literally interacting with you saying hey i love your music so it only makes sense for you to stay in touch with them and and uh build relationships with them because they're going to be your supporters so the other thing that i want to show you guys that not a lot of people know or take advantage of is text marketing you've probably seen a lot of people on social media that says hey text me at this number to join my text message list or hey just text me at this number they're doing that because when you text them your number goes straight into a database and now they can text market you whenever they want so this would be a really good idea for you guys as artists to start building a text database because 90 percent of the time when you text someone they open it unlike email email has maybe a 20 percent open rate text message usually has a 100 percent open rate if you have a new song come out and you text it to people, hey, my new song just dropped, you'll be able to get a lot more downloads, a lot more purchases and a lot more streams. And event companies do this all the time. You probably receiving text notifications from events right now. Every time a party happens or a concert happens, they are texting you. And it is super, super affordable to do text marketing. So as you can see, I'm using easy text and with easy text, you can literally just add credits and for 500 messages is $25. You can even do a hundred credits and that's $5. So you can text a hundred people for $5 every time your song comes out. If you're selling your song for a dollar, all you need is 5% of that a hundred people to download your song for you to make that $5 back. If you're selling the EP, five people who download your song, you're making like $50. So I really want you guys to start building both your text list and your email list. So from now on, you are supposed to start collecting everyone's name and email. Unfortunately, DownloadGate only collects their email. So I'm gonna show you guys in the advertising section how to collect both name and email. So Easy Texting is a free platform, so you can sign up and immediately start using it. They give you a hundred free credits when you sign up. So that's a hundred people you can text your song to right away for free. And when you text someone, the number that pops up is going to be a five digit number. So there's no real way for them to trace it back to you. So if you look here on the top right, this is my Easy Text number, 484848. So you're gonna be assigned a six digit number when you use easy text. So when you're texting people, every single person who receives your text will see your six digit number, not your real number. And if they respond back, there is a chat section um, where you can respond back to them through the website. So every single person who responds back, you can go in and respond back to them here. So you can reply back or you can forward it to yourself. 
So as you can see, building a distribution list is very vital to your success as an artist because the bigger your list, the more people you can reach out to. The more people you can reach out to, the more money you make, the more streams you get. So build your email list, build your text list, build your pixel list, build your followers, and also build your playlist. Another thing you can do is build a theme page because if you build a theme page, you can start posting your own content. So there's so many different ways to distribute your music. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how to get more organic plays and also build a fan base from these organic plays. So I will see you guys in the next video. All right guys, so I'm gonna take you through how to get a bunch more organic plays and followers for your profile. So it's actually pretty easy and pretty straightforward. So this video is probably gonna be really short, but what I'm gonna show you guys is how to grow your SoundCloud page organically. And these are real fans and real people. So this is a huge opportunity to excelling and grow your page very, very fast. So the people who take the time and effort to do this will see a huge push in numbers when it comes to their download gates, when it comes to their plays, their uh, followers. So um, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Repost Exchange. And Repost Exchange is super, super easy and super convenient. Um, basically what it is is you can listen and repost other people's music and in exchange for you listening and reposting other people's music you get points and these points will then go towards other people reposting your music on their channel so that is good in a bunch of different ways because if you are targeting the same niche and they're putting your music in front of their fans that means you're going to get a bunch more plays because no one's going to repost your music if it doesn't fit their audience. So because your music does fit their audience and they repost it to their page, you're going to be taking a bunch of traffic and followers uh, from that person as well. So I'm going to show you how to use it. Super easy, super straightforward. So basically, there's a bunch of different buttons on the left hand side. So you have home campaign members request feedback then under that you have my campaigns my sponsored followers so first off um, repost exchange is a free service but you can also pay you could pay for credits if you do over 30 dollars. so if you do 2500 credits they upgrade you to the artist plan for one free month which is actually really good so I currently have the artist plan because on the artist plan, and it allows me to customize my campaign rules. What that means is I can choose who I target when it comes to reposting my music. If you don't do that, then your music is just gonna be put in front of everyone, of every single genre. But by having custom campaign rules, you can really target people in your niche. So you're getting real plays from people who actually listen to your music. And it also comes with five boosts. So uh, that is really good too. And I'll basically show you what a boost means. But repost exchange is really powerful, even on the free plan. So on the artist plan, you can run over two campaigns simultaneously. On the network plan, three campaigns, promoter, 100, and ultimate is 20. Running 20 campaigns at the same time is ridiculous. You're going to be able to reach so much people and grow so fast that it's unreal. But for the people who want to do it the free way, you have the free plan. Again, I'm using the artist plan because I get to customize my rules. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to buy some credits and show you how I use it. So I'm going to buy a thousand credits. Okay, so I just bought a thousand credits. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and go to campaigns and then on the top, I could pick all the genres that I want to search. So I already have techno, melodic house and techno, melodic techno, deep house and ethereal techno. Um, so I'm just going to go through these and instead of going page by page, it's best to just X everything out, just hide it. This way, if you hide it, you know, just hide them, hide them. 
when you hide it, you're gonna run out of people to repost and then all you do is refresh the page. Because if you don't hide it and you keep scrolling and you go to page three, it's gonna resend you back to page one if you were to exit this screen. So it's best to just go one by one that way. You can see here that you, there's a featured section and basically what this means is you're gonna be popping up on the home screen of everyone who comes to repost exchange so you get 10 maybe 20 times more plays if you do this and 20 times more repost but let me explain to you guys why i purchase rather than doing it the freeway because if i do it the freeway i'm gonna have other people's music on my page and as an artist you really want to only showcase your music on your page so I am paying for my credits. This way I can request people to repost my track rather than me reposting other people's tracks for credit. So what you wanna do is you wanna start a new campaign. You pick the song you want to repost and then you can assign it a credit. So I'm just gonna say 340. Um, you can enable campaign accelerator. This means you get a lot more reposts a lot faster. You can enable comment plus, which means people get an extra two credits for commenting on your track. This way you could get tons and tons of comments on your track. So it helps with social proof. So down here, this is where I was talking about where I can customize my campaign targeting. If I didn't have the artist plan, I would not be able to target my tracks genre. So I'm gonna target melodic techno because that's the style of this music. You also have the option to limit number of followers, limit max number of reposts per day, and limit max number of reposts per 24 hours. So basically what you wanna do, if you have a large budget, you can really just stretch this all the way up. This means that a page with 48,000 followers can repost my music. And that's kind of what I want. I want a page with a large following to repost my music. So if you have the credit, it will make sense. And then all you do is start campaign. So again, it's super simple and super easy. You can see down here, I've done this and I tested it in the past. And you can see it's real comments, real people liking, commenting, following your page because they actually like your music. So repost exchange is really good for getting followers, comments, and likes on your tracks on SoundCloud. What's also good to point out is you do have a boost option here. And basically what happens is whenever your track goes too far down the queue, you can boost it back up to position number one. So for example, anytime someone posts a track, it goes back to the top up here. So instead of uh, say your track got to page five, if you boost it, it puts it back on page one. So boost is really good and having the artist plan gives you five free boosts. So the other thing you could do on repost is you can request people to repost your track. So I'm going to go to outgoing requests and you see these are all the people that I reached out to and asked them to repost my track. Some rejected it, some reposted, a lot of them expired. And if I wanted to, I can just go back to uh, send new requests, which is on the top right. And then I can send any of these people my music to repost. So I'm gonna put my genre, which is melodic techno. And I want people who have at least, uh, let's see, let's say 100 credits, 150 credits to repost this track. So 6 a.m. I'm gonna request for them to repost it. I'm gonna request for them to repost my track quest. All right, now as you see on the top left, my credits has dropped. So every time you request someone to repost your track, you do lose credits. If they do not repost your track, then you get your credit back after 24 hours. And that's pretty much it for repost exchange. Basically, again, um, I bought credits because I don't want to have to repost other people's music on my page because I want my page to be clean and only have my music on it. But then I'm fortunate enough to be able to purchase credits. If you do not 
want to purchase credits, you can just do this free. And basically you just listen to someone's music. You have to listen for a couple of seconds. Then you unlock the repost and then you can repost it to your feed if you want. And then if you repost, you get the credits. And then once you get the credits, you can start requesting people to repost your track or run campaigns. So I'm actually gonna run one more campaign just to use my credits, start a new campaign. So another thing, if you have the budget, what's really dope is you can run sponsored follow campaigns. And basically what this is, is you can get a bunch of people to follow your page, your SoundCloud page. I've never done this myself, but if you have the budget to spend, you can literally get a bunch of people to follow your page. So if you ever need a boost and follow, and these are real people, if they unfollow you within seven days, then you get that percentage of money back. So when you do this, you'll see that about 90% of people stick and stay on your page. So you don't have to worry about having a huge drop off or a huge unfollow rate because people tend to actually stay on your page and not unfollow you after uh, that time period. So um, this is something you can do to build your followers. And a lot of time people need social proof to be taken seriously. So if you need a little boost, um, you can definitely come and do this because this is people in your industry who actually likes your music. All right, cool. So this is why I want us to use repost exchange because remember how we set up the links in our songs so if someone likes your song they can download your music and then you collect their email that's the whole purpose of this we're trying to get our music in front of as many people as possible who listen to our music in our industry and by using repost exchange you're getting your music in front of so many people for free um as you see look i just got a repost so this person has 468 followers and they just reposted my music. Now a lot more people are gonna see my music and it only cost me five credits. That's insane. So this is literally the best way to get the most organic reach. And this person is not obligated to follow me or like the track. All they have to do is repost it for the credit. So since they liked the song and followed me, that's just a, a side benefit of doing this. So that's why I wanna show you guys repost exchange. See, and look, they another person just commented on my track. So they're reposting, commenting, and following me. And remember how I showed you guys how you can also go in and see everyone who likes your song or repost your song and then send them a message saying, hey, if you wanna purchase the track, here it is. But yes, every single person who listens to your song from Repost Exchange will have the opportunity to download your track and in exchange for downloading your song, you get their email. Now that's the strategy behind using Repost Exchange. Now I have to show you guys how to uh, export the emails from hyped it like another one okay cool so now I want to show you guys how to export your emails from hyped it so for this download gate I had created I only collected six emails. that's because I stopped promoting it but I collected six emails so you just click on the number six and then you can either export all your email addresses or just the email addresses for that gate I'm just gonna do it for this gate. So I'm gonna download it. And now since we have MailChimp, we can go to MailChimp and upload it to MailChimp. So in MailChimp, you go to audience and then you go to manage audience. Then in manage audience, you go to view audience and then you can go into your list and click add contacts. And then you just go to import contacts. And then uh, you go to upload file. So then you can upload a file and that's the file that we just downloaded. So now I'm uploading the file to every single person who has downloaded my music. Finalize, complete import. And now it's just gonna import. So now you can see everyone who's actually downloaded my track in the past. So from here, you want to be able to email them. 
So whenever you have a new release, you can send them emails. And all you do is you just go to create an email and then you create an email and then you put in the name. So whatever the name of your song is, so I could say believe release. So this is going to be the campaign name. And really you just follow all the steps. You add a from who's from. So sure. Subject is so for the subject, what you want to do with the subject, the subject line, you want to make it sound conversational. So make it sound like they're your friends. Um, it's like you're having a conversation with your friend. You can really spot someone who is trying to sell you something um, by the way they put the subject. So the best advice I could give you guys about the subject line is to keep it conversational and keep it friendly. So you can use emojis as well. And try not to use capital letters. Uh, try to stick to only lowercase letters. Literally, that's something a friend would say to me. So if I saw, hey, just release this, what do you think? The chance of me opening it is going to be 10 times higher. So again, keep it conversational, keep it lowercase, and uh, do it as if you're talking to a friend. So I'm just gonna press save. From here, you can design your email and it doesn't matter which one you click because the one we're gonna use is not gonna have a lot of images. The simpler, the better. Most marketers use simple text, just plain text when they're doing email marketing. For you guys, just do something really simple. You can pick sell products because it just has one image and one button, which is perfect. So what I would do is I would just delete everything. I don't need anything on top, no images on top. And I would keep up here blank. And I, if I wanted to use an image, I would just use just one image. So I would also come down here and delete this as well. So I would uh, edit the link and just put the link to the song. Or you can even do a file. Uh, if you want to give the song away, you could give it to your email list. Like if you have a database of a bunch of DJs, giving them your song increases the chance of it getting played. But for me, web address, and then I put the link to where they can go purchase the song. And then in here, you, again, you just keep it super short and simple. Yeah, so super simple, just one sentence, doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, I might even hyperlink this. It says last song, I'll put uh, something there hyperlink it and whenever so they have two places they could click last song to go to the link to buy the song or they could click the button and it brings them to the site where they could purchase the song again the reason I'm doing it this way I'm giving away free music through the download gates on my SoundCloud giving the music away for free in exchange for their email address so I can sell them later via my email. And that's one strategy. There's so many other strategies you can use, but that's the one I use because the power is having a distribution list. The more emails you have, the better it is for you to keep in touch with your fans. And as you guys saw in the last video, you can upload all your email address into Facebook and retarget all of them. So again, the bigger your email list, the better as an artist because this is your distribution list. This is gonna be your power when it comes to getting gigs. If you want gigs, this is gonna be something you can offer them. Hey, I have an email list with over 2,000 people that I can email who support me. That will immediately increase your value as an artist. So from there, you can um, test your email and send a test message to yourself. So test email to yourself, or you can just continue and just send the entire email to the database. So you could send test email or on the top, once you're finished, you can press send. And that's it, you can start email marketing people. And what's even cool is in order to use this feature in MailChimp, you would have to upgrade, but you could start creating customer journeys. And basically what a customer journey is, is you could start creating automations. So for example, signs up, for example, this is called an automation. So as soon as someone signs up to your email list, you can have it so one day later, they get one email. And then a week later, they get another email. So let's say I delay it for one week. So after a week after they sign up to my email, they get this email. Then after a week from that email, they sign up to my email, they get 
another email with a different song and you can literally set this up for the entire year. So they can get 52 emails, one email every week with your song, continuously selling your list. So this is really powerful um, email automation. So what you wanna do as an artist is you want to be able to automate your selling process. So get as much email as you can, automate the selling of your music, of your EP, of your merch, automate asking people to follow you on social media. There's so much you can do with email automation, but as an artist, you're gonna be way ahead of everyone else if you start doing this. So that's it, I hope that was helpful for this section. Now we're gonna go into public relations and in public relations, we're gonna cover how to use other people's audience to get way more traffic, get way more downloads, get way more follows. So we're gonna cover that in the next video. So I'll see you guys over there. Hey guys, so up to this point, we've covered a bunch of things. So we went over branding and your appearance online. We went over content creation and how to use content to grow organically. We went over distribution and how to build your own distribution list and the importance of building your own distribution list. And then we went over advertising. With advertising, you're paying for growth. And now we go over to the public relations section. So public relations is all about getting access to someone else's audience. So the question is, how do you actually find your audience online? There's so many channels out there where your listeners are hanging out at. And the most important thing is to find where your fans are hanging out at and where they're conjugated. Because once you find that out, now all you have to do is figure out a way to tap into that market. And I'm gonna actually show you guys how to do that in some of the other lessons in public relations. But once you do find your audience, you have to figure out how to get your music in front of that audience. And when you do get your music in front of them or get your brand in front of them, what can you offer them to capture them as a fan? So you have to be able to offer them something to actually get them to convert into a fan. So it's very vital to use different angles when it comes to converting your listeners into followers. And by angles, what I mean is, it's just like testing. Just like how in advertising, you have to test a bunch of different content to see which one converts the best. When you are tapping into someone else's audience, the concept is the same. You have to test different content to see which one will convert the most of their followers into your followers or your fans. So I guess the question is, how do you actually find your audience? And really there's so many different forms of media and each of the media outlets out there has people who are your potential fans. So I'm gonna actually walk you guys through a bunch of the media outlets out there and show you where you can find your audience. And when I say media outlets, I'm talking about there's ways you can find your fans on Google, on YouTube, on Pinterest, in Facebook Audience Insights, on Instagram, on blogs, on charts, on meme accounts, on, on SoundCloud, and from other artists as well. So since we just finished advertising, it only makes sense for me to start with advertising or the Facebook Business Manager. So this is Audience Insights. And basically what Audience Insights is, is it shows you data on any interest. So in the interest section, you just type in a interest. So for us, it'll be an artist. So you can type in an artist like Chris Brown. If you type in Chris Brown, it gives you a bunch of data on Chris Brown. Most of his fans are women. 60% of his fans are women, 40% are men. Majority of them are single and have a college degree. It even shows you job titles. So all of this information is super important when it comes to your advertising because you can customize your message to reach or speak to this audience. And there's also a location tab. So it tells you what location majority of his fans congregate in. So if you wanted to target most of uh, Chris Brown's fan, you can target this specific location. And then you also have the page like section. Now page like it refers you the top category for everyone who likes Chris Brown. So for TV network, majority of people who like Chris Brown falls under Black Gold TV. For a TV channel, 
BET Music. So these are all targeting capabilities. So instead of typing in Chris Brown, you can type in BET Music and you reach a lot of his fans. Now, if you scroll down, it categorized by affinity score. And basically affinity score is how likely your audience is to like a given page compared to everyone on Facebook. So the higher the affinity score, the higher the fans are that will like Chris Brown as well. So a lot of the people who like Chris Brown also likes Jess Hilarious. So she is someone you can target. So say we were to put in Tale of Us. Tale of Us is an artist in my genre. You can see that the, the most popular event is Avant Garden. So I can literally target any of these places and get access to uh, people or fans who like Tale of Us. Tech support, if I target tech support, I'll have access to um, majority of the people who like Tale of Us. And this is super critical because it helps me figure out other accounts or other interests that my fans like. So this is one place where you can find your audience. Next, you have Instagram itself and you can go to theme pages in your genre. Theme pages in your genre usually have people who like your kind of music. This is a theme page that I would go to to get access to my fans or my potential fans. So if I wanted to reach a lot more people and have a super high conversion rate, I'd reach out to an account like this. And when you do go to account, there's usually a drop down button and you click button and it suggests you a bunch of other accounts. So if I go to Techno Blazer, this is another account that has majority of my audience. So really it's kind of unlimited. There's thousands of theme pages and meme pages out there for your specific kind of music. Doesn't matter what genre you are. There's theme pages for techno, for rap, for hip hop, for countries, for literally any kind of music. All you have to do is find the theme pages. Now there's also meme pages like World Star Hip Hop. There's tons of channels like this as well where you can negotiate some sort of deal with and get access to a bunch of people who have your fans. Again, if you click the drop down, it suggests you a bunch of other accounts, it even suggests you artists. These artists have your fans as well. So these are good people you can target as well or depending on what level you are, you can reach out to them and negotiate with them some sort of deal for them to share some of your content. Next, you can find your audience on SoundCloud. Again, I'm going to show you how I do for my music, but it's the same for every single genre. There's a bunch of accounts out there that share your music. So you, you can see here we share your music. This is actually a page I use quite often. I reach out to them through their service over here, usually in the description area and repost requests. So then I just go here, fill out the request, and usually there's a fee associated with it. This account only posts music from my genre. So by me reposting my music on this genre, I'm getting access to 55,000 fans. And this is why I've been growing so fast on SoundCloud and some of my other channels. A lot of the people who find me from pages like this usually go over to my Instagram and follow me on Instagram or they'll follow my playlist. So utilizing accounts like this is amazing. So there's also other accounts that have your genre in their name. Usually these are all repost accounts and then you can also see that they partner with tons of other accounts. You can literally reach out to any of these accounts and get your music put in front of your audience. So again, public relations is all about accessing other people's audience. And then there's Google. So in Google, all you do is type in an artist's name, someone in your genre in the search box. And then you can see that there's a bunch of photos of the artist and each photo is linked to a blog site or some site. So you have WeRayView.com, DJ Mag, there's Track ID Blog, there's YouTube. So there's a ton of blogs talking about these artists. And because there's blogs actually writing about these artists, you can reach out to these blogs and ask them if they can create an article about you. 
because they have your audience. Otherwise, they wouldn't talk about the artists in your genre. So go to Google, type in the artist that's in your genre, see what accounts and what channels are posting about them or creating blogs about them. And then you just reach out to those blogs. In some of the later videos, I'm gonna actually show you guys how to reach out to these blogs. But for now, I'm just going over how to find them. And then you have Pinterest. Pinterest is very similar to Google, where there's a bunch of blogs posting about a specific artist. So you literally just type in the artist's name, and then you can see influencers talking about the artist, um, which means you can reach out to the influencer and message them. So for a post like this, someone named Mary with 55K had created this post. So you can literally go to her account, message her. And now your music is gonna be put in front of her audience. And all you do is you hover over the photo and you can see where it's posting it. You have people.com, you have hollywoodlist.com, YouTube, so Pinterest is another area where you could find people that have access to your audience. And then you have YouTube. On YouTube, all you do is type in the artist name again, and you can see the accounts that are posting music of this artist. So in my industry, this guy, Electro Junkie, is probably someone I would want to reach out to. He has 250,000 subscribers. So if I, click on his name, they usually have a contact information in their about section. So you go to the about section and then you can literally see his email and reach out to him. And then if not, you can literally go to his Instagram and reach out to him on Instagram. He has only 1300 followers. So he'd be someone I'd want to connect with. So YouTube is a really powerful source for getting in touch with people of influence and literally just reach out to them. And then you have charts. I use Beatport a lot um, in my genre. So for Beatport, if I need more artists to research, all I have to do is go to a chart, type in my genre and see all the top trending artists. And then I go over to Google and type in that artist in Google and then all the articles and accounts that are posting about it, it's going to pop up. And then I would reach out to these accounts. And the last thing I want to show you guys is Fiverr. So Fiverr is super awesome. Not a lot of people take advantage of it, but as you see here, you can literally reach out to radio stations and have radio stations play your music for only 20 bucks. I will skyrocket your music to 5,000 radio colleges. So there's tons of radio stations on Fiverr who would actually play your music and get your exposure. So the other place you could go to find your audience is Spotify. And on Spotify, all you have to do is type in the name of your genre or type in an artist name and a bunch of playlists will pop up. So I'll just type in the same artist tell of us. And then I scroll down and look, a bunch of playlists. Then you just click see all and literally a bunch of playlists that I can reach out to. Um, all you have to do is click them and see which playlist has a bunch of followers or likes. So this one has 621 likes. And all I have to do is either find him on Instagram or email him and um, ask him if he can add me to his playlist. For this one says follow YouTube channel. So if I go to their YouTube, their email is gonna be there so I can reach out to them on their email. So you just gotta keep doing this and keep uh, finding playlists. So this one has 5,836 likes. So this is one person that I would want to reach out to. His name is Mike Smorenberg. All I have to do is find him on Instagram and literally just go to Instagram, go to the search box and type in his name. Majority of the time they pop up. A lot of the time playlist owners, they'll have their email address in the description or they'll have a link to their Instagram in the description. So let me type in a genre. I scroll down, I find playlists, and 
look, you can see that, see, email address right there, so I can always reach out to him. Uh, Technonation, so I can always reach out to this guy. Again, 1,000 likes on his Spotify playlist. Again, these are all people that I can reach out to to get access to their fans. You can also click on an artist, and in the artist, you can scroll down and you can see fans also like so in the fans also like section these are all artists that you can google or target yourself or type in youtube and find what playlists or accounts have their music and reach out to those people artist playlists so literally these are the top playlists that this artist has been featured in so there's tons and tons of ways to go about finding your fans and getting access to a audience that someone else owns and this is something i highly recommend every single artist do because it's literally the fastest way to grow because if this account shares your music thousands of people will hear your song and this is within hours if you use advertising it takes some time for this many people to hear your song depending on your daily budget but if someone shares your music on their profile or instagram account a lot of their followers see it or spotify or radio there's just tons of ways bloggers using someone else's audience is one of the best strategies that you can do for growing as an artist so in the next video i'm gonna actually walk you guys through how to actually go about meshing these people what do you say when you actually do find them and how do you negotiate with them so i'm gonna see you guys over in the next video and we're gonna go over all of this what's up guys so i'm gonna take you through a couple of documents that i have prepared for you guys um, feel free to make a copy and save it to your drive but let me walk you through the process of uh, PR how do you get people to write articles about you so the first thing you want to do is um, the same thing I showed you in the same lesson which is go to Google type in an artist name and as you see I typed in Brian Sid and he's a big DJ in the melodic techno scene. But the cool thing is he's also local to me. So he's in Brooklyn and I'm in Manhattan. So if I could find people that's written articles about him, since he's in my neighborhood, um, the chances of me getting these same people to write an article about me increases a lot. So if you guys have an artist that's blowing up or that has blown up, that's from where you're located, find the same publications that have written articles about that artist and reach out to that publication. So I typed in Brian Sid and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to images. In images, it's going to show me a bunch of sources that has written something about him. You can see right here, here's EDM identity. You have Progressive Astronaut, you have the Playground, New Rhythm Music. If you click one, you can see that underneath there's a bunch more other ones. So literally you can never run out of uh, places to find people who have written articles about this artist. And if one artist doesn't work, then try another artist. You know, there's tons of artists out there uh, in your genre. So just keep looking up the artists that are in your space until you do find some publications. So once you find an article, you click on an article, you click on the image, and then it takes you to the site. So when you go to the site, what I suggest is to actually read it. And by reading, you're also gonna have an article to refer to when you are messing these writers. You can see that at the bottom, the person who wrote this, her name is Masha. And if I click on her name, it brings me to her profile and it says, follow the author. So now I'm able to directly message this person and ask them if they are still writing for this magazine and if they can write an article about me because I'm gonna be sending them my press release. So if you click on the link, it brings me to her Instagram. So now I can message her directly. She only has 907 followers. So that means she's most likely going to see my message. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what to say later on, but I wanted to show you the process. Uh, so you go to Google, you find an article, you go to the article, 
and it'll have the writer's name and uh, you just search for the writer. Sometimes it won't show you the writer's name, but what you can do if it doesn't show you the writer's name is if you go all the way to the bottom, you can click on contact and then it usually lists you out a bunch of contact information so you can email these people directly, asking them for whatever their service is. So I put together a spreadsheet for you guys. Uh, when you go to the spreadsheet, you'll see there's an artist search section, there's a publication name, website, contact information, other, author, social handle, article, responded, and notes. So in the artist section, obviously you put down the name of the artist that you searched. And then in the publication name, this is the name of the site where the article's from. So for this one, it is Magnetic Magazine. So I put Magnetic Magazine, I put the actual website, I put the contact information. In the other section there, this is where you can put an alternative contact information. So for example, what I put was the contact form. What I put was a contact form. So in the contact area, this is where you put like an email or something. And then in the other is where you put a link to the contact website. And then if you find the writer, you put the writer's name and author, and then you put their social handle and the name of the article. In the respondent section, you can put yes or no. And then just leave yourself some notes. So I reached out on the 12th. I followed up on the 14th. If I follow up again, I say, followed up again on the 15th. Uh, so this just helps you stay organized. Again, there's tons of articles on each artist. So just go through this and fill it out. And this helps you keep track. Say a month from now, you come back to the sheet, you'll see that uh, a bunch of these people haven't responded. So now you can go back in and reach out to them and follow up with them. So go and make a copy of this. And to make a copy, you go to file, make a copy, and then you save it to your drive. So now that brings us to the press release. What is a press release and why should you write one? So a press release basically is a document that provides a journalist or a writer or a blogger with some basic information about you, a topic about you, a headline, a story, problem, solution, and you write a press release because it's really your pitch to whatever publication you are reaching out to. So journalists and bloggers, they need stories. They need more material to write about, especially on the internet. On the internet, the turnover is so fast that they constantly need new articles to write about. So the press release is you going like, hey, here's an article that I think would be great for your readers. And here's the value I see to your readers. So you create a press release and you email it to the bloggers and the journalists and the writers. And if it's interesting enough and if they see that it fits their readers, then they will more than likely write an article about you, especially if you structure it this way. So the first thing you want to do is you want to talk about your angle. So when it comes to an angle, an angle is basically the, the hook, like which way do I want to go about this? Every topic will have many angles. So for example, you're releasing your new single. You can have an angle as an up and coming artist, or you can have an angle as in, hey, this is the story behind the song. So if I was to write an article and choose an angle, so I can use the angle of, hey, I'm an independent artist who's not signed to any label, but yet I'm still outperforming majority of the labels. Or I can use an angle of, I'm writing this song because I've experienced this issue and this song addresses this issue. So there's so many different angles you could choose from and the angle is the first thing you should think about. And then you wanna write your goal. Your goal, what's your goal of actually having them write about you? Is it to get more streams? Is it to get more people to come to your events? So you put in your goal, you put in the location or release date, you put in the problem or the story, your profile, the artist profile, 
the supporting information. This could be your song, your past songs have performed crazy well, have over 100,000 streams or 10,000 streams. Um, artists are supporting you like crazy. I performed at this event, at this venue. You know, this is just data to show that you're credible. And then you want to include a personal quote. You also want to have a call to action, a summary, a catchy headline, a subheadline, which is optional, a supporting photo, because photos tell a story of its own. A good photo can catch someone's attention. And then um, about me section, you want to do the summary and the headlines last because you are going to summarize what you wrote above. And then the headline is very important because journalists and bloggers receive tons of emails every single day. So this needs to stand out and be catchy. So I have some notes here. Create a press release in this format makes it easier to write. However, you shouldn't email it in this format. See below. So I'll show you guys what I mean by that. And being polarizing is good pick a side and stick to it so if you are neutral that's boring so you want to pick a side that's on the left or on the right you want to be polarizing you want to be for record labels or against record labels you want to be for marketing yourself or for having a manager don't be neutral so never speak in hyperboles or exaggeration you don't want to over exaggerate things um, because sometimes the blogger will ask for resources and data and proof. So don't speak in higher bolts or exaggerate. So here's an example press kit that I've actually written that you guys can use as an example. So my angle is growing as an independent artist by using digital marketing strategy. So my goal is to share with the readers that there is another way to grow yourself as an artist without being signed to a label or having a manager. Location, New York City, they, the story behind my press release. Then I give them uh, links to my profiles. I give them some data, some supporting information. So I've interviewed hundreds of artists through my agency. So I'm just giving them evidence. And then my personal quote is, it's exciting to see how fast I have been growing with only two years under my belt as a producer. This only goes to show you that if I can do it, anyone can do it. My call to action is to check out my music and my summary is just summarizing everything above. And my headline is exclusive music hat, Brooklyn rising melodic techno star and scene shares secret music hacks that exploded his growth. And then sub headline is one of the fastest rising and promising up and coming techno artists of 2021 unseen share secrets for growing without management or labor representation. So again, you want to write in this format, but when you actually go to send it out, you're not going to send it out in this format. So I have a supporting photo and I have my about me. So now this is a format that you want to actually send your press release in. So you want to start with the headline, then go sub headline, then location and release date, then the summary, the problems, your supporting data, your quote, your closing and call to action, your profile link about me and attach any photos in low resolution when you are emailing your press release so this is very important make sure when you do send your press release it's in this format also your press release should fit on one page um, when it comes to supporting photos you're going to attach the photo in the email the photo is not going to be on the document or if you really want to put in a document like this you can just make sure it's low resolution and if the reporter wants the higher quality photo, then tell them you can provide it to them. Now, this is what I did in order to write my press release. Again, I'm not a writer and I don't like writing at all. So what I did was I just modeled someone else's article. I found out the key points that they were discussing that article and I just took the basic key points. So as you can see, this is how I started. I had two screens right next to each other and on the left side i had the article on the right side i had the blank sheet of paper so as you see his headline is exclusive playlist if you go to mine my headline is exclusive music hat 
So I'm just modeling his article to create my press release. And this is the after on the bottom where I actually fill out all the information based off my angle. Again, I'm not copying him. I already have my own unique angle and he has his own unique angle. And I'm just taking the flow, getting ideas from the article and using it in my own. So if you're not a writer, I highly encourage you to do this because it's the most effective way rather than trying to think of everything on your own. You can just model someone else's article. But if you are a writer, feel free to do this on your own and write your own press release. Again, the majority of the time it's best not to try to reinvent the wheel and just use what's already working. Just model what's already working. So the next thing I want to show to you guys is when you are writing the email, what do you say in the email? And I have a really quick template that you guys can use for your email. And you really just want to make sure that it's interesting. The most important thing is that it needs to be interesting. So you want to make sure it's interesting. You want to have a catchy subject line. You want to address the person by name. You want to tell them why you're reaching out to them. Explain why you believe your information would benefit them. Answer the question, who cares? Like why should they care? And why should their audience care? Explain why their audience would be interested. And again, you can do this in bullet points. You'll see that I didn't use bullet points, but feel free to use bullet points. Let them know how they can reach you and end with the link to your press release. So before press the send, make sure you proofread and get some friends to proofread as well. And most importantly, keep it short, interesting, and to the point. So here's an example email. My subject line is Brooklyn Melodic Techno Star Unseen shares secret music hacks that exploded his growth. Again, very simple, high name. I just read the article you wrote. Always talk about an article that you just read and put a link to it so they know what you're talking about. So I just read an article you ran a few months ago. I thought you and your readers might also love what I've been doing. Attached you will find both my press release and my press kit. So the press kit that we made in the beginning of the course, you're gonna wanna attach that to your email as well as link to your press release. It's best to link to Google Docs because they can just go in. They don't have to download anything. They just click a link. And again, my angle is I'm going in as a digital marketer. You can be going in as a local DJ or a local producer or someone who has been growing. It really depends your angle. When you are writing your emails, just keep your angle in mind. Now, I have some notes for you guys. So you're not actually writing the story for the blogger, journalist, or writer. You're giving the journalist an idea of your vision for what this story can be, along with the top-level information they need to understand why their audience will be interested in this topic. Yeah, so you're not writing the article for them. You're just giving them bullet points and key information that will give them an idea of what the topic is and why you think your audience would be interested. So again, keep it short and keep it to one page. So great images help sell a great story. So don't be afraid to brag about your originals or exclusive photography. So if you have images that no one else has or hasn't seen or images that represent you uh, fully, then you can tell them about it. And it's best to link out to your press release via Google Doc for ease of access. Both Macs and PCs can open Google Docs. Now, uh, there's going to be cases where they don't respond. Majority of the time, they probably won't respond. But it's a numbers game. You just got to keep sending these emails. So if you need to follow up with any of them, here is a really good template for following up with people. So a lot of times, you might send a press release to someone that's not interested but they might know someone who might be interested in this topic so this email follow-up is really good to either get that person to respond or get them to send this to someone else so the last thing i want to show you guys is email pitching when you go to pitch to playlist um, it's actually really really simple all you have to do is say hey guys wanted to check if you guys have a media kit or price sheet to get a song of ours added to your playlist. 
So a media kit is basically the playlist pricing sheet. If they are a really good playlist, they will have a media kit, which is just a document that shows you all their price. So they'll most likely respond to you when you send stuff like this. Again, keep it simple. You don't have to send them the song in the first email. You want them to respond and then you send them the song. Or if you really want, you can send them the song. But like, hey, I would love to get this song onto your playlist. Please send me your media kit. Now, when it comes to Instagram pitching, you find a playlist on Spotify and then you reach out to them on Instagram. Here is a couple of templates that you can use. Again, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Doesn't have to be crazy. You want to get them to respond to you first. So you have the email pitch template for a playlist and you have the Instagram pitch template for uh, when you're reaching out to people on Instagram. Hey guys, so I'm gonna go over collaboration real quick. It's gonna be really short, but it's super important for your growth. When it comes to growth, collaboration is one of the fastest ways to grow as an artist. Additionally, it's one of the best ways to reduce your workload as an artist. So when you're collaborating with people, you're dividing the work in two. So usually the creation process tends to go a lot quicker. And this is something not a lot of artists do. It's literally one of the best ways to grow, but yet only a small percentage of artists actually do this. You'll see a lot of top artists out there. They're always collaborating with other artists. And the reason is because each artist has their own audience and you want to tap into as many audience as possible. This is how you're gonna triple the speed of your growth. You need to find artists at your level or higher and collaborate with them. Even if they're not at your level, you can still collaborate with them and, and tap into their audience. Because the name of the game is basically who has the biggest fan base. The more fans you have, the faster you will grow as an artist. So. The fastest way to grow is by collaborating um, because you'll reach people three times faster at three times the speed. So when you collaborate, you reach about 75% more people than you would if you were to go solo. And that's because you have access to the other artists entire fan base by collaborating with them. But at the same time, you get higher engagement and more visibility. Plus the algorithms reward engagement. So the more people who are engaging in your content, who are listening to your music, streaming your music, liking your music, adding it to their playlist, the more the algorithms are gonna push that song to more people. Because again, the algorithms want to keep as many people on the platform as possible. So when you collaborate with other people, you're now driving two times the traffic to one song. And this is going to boost the amount of organic reach and organic streams that you get on your song. So that alone should be a really good reason to start collaborating with as many artists as possible. Outside of that, there's tons of other benefits when it comes to collaborating with artists. And some of those benefits are an expansion in your network and building better relationships with artists and venues and also because two heads are better than one you'll be able to create better production when you're collaborating with other artists they tend to have a sound or a style that you don't have so when you put two and two together you're gonna have something really fresh and really new you'll also be able to learn new techniques and see what this artist is doing so you can start picking up on some of their tricks and start implementing some of those tricks. So when I first started Unseen, I was a new producer, but because I was in a duo, I was able to see how he was producing and making music, which is why I'm able to produce the way I'm able to produce today, because I have my own style and I took some of his style and also every other artist I collaborated with, I take different skills and techniques from each of them. So by collaborating with other artists, you're literally learning and becoming a student and you'll be able to implement new techniques to advance your sound and make you a lot more unique. Plus you'll land better opportunities because promoters care about how many people you can bring to a venue or to a gig. So if you collaborate with someone you now have an opportunity to do gigs with them 
and land better opportunities or better gigs because you're now able to bring more people. And additionally, you'll also be able to get some helpful feedback and constructive criticism from the artists that you are collaborating with. There's just so much benefits from collaborating with someone outside of just expansion alone because collaborating can be really fun and rewarding at the same time. So you want to make sure you're, you're doing this um, because it makes your experience as an artist so much better. Plus, there's just so much benefits in uh, collaborating with other artists. So I'm going to show you guys real quick how to find artists that you can collaborate with. And really, you should be spending a lot of your time reaching out to artists on a similar level than you or a little bit higher because if you get them to say yes, that's a huge opportunity for you to reach a ton more people. And you can always do this virtually or digitally and just send files to each other rather than being there in person. Although being there in person is also amazing because um, you learn a lot more when you're there in person, but now you can, you can make music together digitally and just send stems. When I collaborate with artists um, in different countries, we're just sharing stems with each other. So one of the ways to find an artist is when you find playlists that has your sound. So if you go to search and type in your genre, you can find playlists that have a bunch of artists in that genre. So I can click basically any playlist and technically all of these artists in this playlist would be someone I'd want to potentially collaborate with. You can even click on the artist and scroll down and you can see fans also like. So these are also artists that you can reach out to and collaborate with. What you can do is if you have a Spotify profile, you can also go to your Spotify page and then click the three dots by your music or by your song and click go to song radio. Now, all the songs in this playlist are songs that sound similar to your song and it's on somewhat of a similar level to that song. So you can literally go through all of these artists and message them. And you could do that to each song. Each song has its own song radio. So again, uh, you could go to song radio and look through there. You can also go to sites like Beatport or to the charts again and type in your genre or find your genre and all the artists in your genre are also people that you can reach out to for collaborations. So you can go to the top 100 tracks and you can message all of these artists as well. Um, if these artists are too big, you can go to the record label, go to track section or go to release sections and you can see all the songs that's been released on that label. Not all of these artists are big artists, so you can reach out to a lot of these artists as well. So utilize the charts as well. Um, so basically when it comes to collaborating, you just have to do a little bit of research, find people on a similar level or higher than you and just reach out to them. Just DM them on Instagram saying, hey, I see you're an artist, uh, love your sound, would love to collaborate with you in the future. Um, do you have any songs that you're working on currently that I, I can possibly jump on? And that's it. And then once you do that, then you can start collaborating with this artist, start building relationships with this artist. And then uh, from there, you can use that artist to get to someone else. So if that artist is on a higher level, you can do the same thing. Go to Spotify, find who that artist is similar to, reach out to the artists that are on a similar level to that person. And then you just keep going up and up and up. So definitely take advantage of collaborating and use it. Again, not a lot of artists collaborate with each other strategically. So definitely do this um, because it will help you grow a lot faster.